Hi everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have a very practical and fun project for you today. This is the June Taylor Insulated Shopper's Tote. Anymore, when we go to buy groceries, we're taking our own bags in to buy them and not using the plastic bags or a lot of grocery stores don't even have them anymore. So I think this is a very practical thing. I have one in my car and I do use this every week when I go shopping. The collection that we chose for this is called Sun Showers by Maywood Studio and we have a bag done in the pink. We are going to be making the bag in teal. So I'm going to show you two different colorways. Uh, this fabric is available right now on our website as is the batting, the batting kits. So we do not have kits on this project, but we do have batting for you to purchase and make your own. We would love to see what you guys come up with. So please post your uh, finished shopper totes on our feed. We would love to see all your fun projects. So to get started, this is what your batting kit looks like. And we're going to actually open this up and see what this is. I want to show you what comes in this package. If we can get this open here. There we go. Okay. All right. So I have, ooh, this is cool. This is a template plastic. This is used in the bottom of the bag to give it some stability. Use that at the end. You've got your handle, the webbing for the handles. You've got three elastic. Uh, uh, bands, they're elastic bands, sorry. And you can use these to put a button on here and actually close this bag if you'd like it to close. And then we have our batting. I'm going to open this up and show you what this looks like. Here's our directions are inside. That's always a good thing to have. There we go. So you can see this is a large piece of um, Inselbrite batting and it's printed on this side but not printed on this side. So this is a sew as you go. We're gonna follow the numbers to sew by number, all right? So all of the lines on this are placement lines for your fabric. They're not sewing lines, they're actually placement lines. So it's not quite like paper piecing, but more place and sew, all right? So that's what our batting has. So what I have done is I have trimmed my batting out and I have used some spray baste to spray baste this side to the lining fabric. All right. And then we stitched all the way around on this outside line with contrast thread. And the reason we use contrast thread is because we need to be able to see where we're stitching, where our stitch lines are after we're completely done with the project. All right. So I'm going to show you how we have done that ahead of time. Okay, here we go. So I have my batting like this. Here is my lining fabric. And you can see we use bright red thread to stitch around this so that I can see that. This is going to be an important cutting line at the end. After we get this all sewn together, you're not going to be able to see that line anymore. So we need to have a cutting line. And that's what you're creating when you're sewing this together. All right. So here's this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a fabric number one. We're going to start with number one in the very center. And that is right here. We have our squares pre-cut like this. And we're going to take fabric number two, which is this one. And we're just going to lay them right sides together. This is where it's ultimately going to be folded to after I stitch it. But for right now, we're going to put them right sides together. Okay. Now I'm going to pin these. Oh, these pins are so amazing. These are called cool pins. They're by the Gypsy Quilter. What I love about these pins is this is heat proof so that you can iron on these. We're not going to be ironing this project today but you can iron these pins and it's not going to melt. They're also sturdier pins than my fine patchwork pins. I love the fine patchwork pins for piecing and quilting, but when you try to use them on a project like this, especially with batting, 
they're gonna bend very easily and I don't wanna bend my pins. So I use these cool pins by the Gypsy Quilter when I'm attaching something like this. So I'm gonna turn this sideways like this and now I'm just gonna place a pin right here just like this, all right? So I'm gonna sew from here to here so my fabric is on my placement line right here fabric is right next to it. I'm going to sew a quarter inch starting here, ending here, and then I'll show you how we press that open. All right, so we're over here at the sewing machine, and what I have done is I just rolled this excess up so that it will easily fit under here underneath my machine. All right? So we're going to start sewing here. Quarter inch seam, I have my quarter inch foot on so I know where my quarter inch is. This is the Bernina 770. I absolutely love this machine. I'm gonna trim my thread. All right, now we'll go back over and we're gonna press this. Okay, so now I've sewn this. So I'm gonna take out my pin, and I wanna show you, this is a tool by Clover. This is such a nice piece. This is the Clover Roll and Press. What it does, it has this roller thing here that is going to press my seam perfectly. Because you don't wanna use an iron on this. I think I told you that once already. I'll probably say that several times. Don't put an iron on this batting, all right? I know you're tempted to. Don't use an iron on it. So the roll and press, when I press the seam now with this, see how that just pressed that seam? Look how nice that is. It looks like I used an iron, but I didn't. This is a really handy little tool. All right, so now we're gonna follow the numbers. That was piece two, now we're gonna go to piece three. So again, I'm gonna place my fabric. This is where it goes. I'm gonna do this one more time for you guys. All right, and I'm gonna put a pin here. These are so nice. These pins are not even bending when I'm using them on this. And I'm going through the batting and two layers of fabric. They're beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna start here and sew. So on this one, I'm gonna roll my other side up and put this into my machine like this, so that this is, I'm ready to sew. I wanna to talk to you guys about how I put this pin in here. I dropped my pin lower than my quarter inch seam, and so I was able to sew straight past that pin, and you can see I didn't even come close to the tip of that pin. That's why I did not take the pin out as I was sewing. I'm sure you guys saw that and thought, oh my goodness, she's gonna hit a pin, but I did not. These pins are substantial and you are not gonna to wanna to hit these with your sewing machine. So I recommend placing them lower out of my seam allowance. And you can see it held my fabric perfectly. My fabric did not move anywhere, but I was able to just stitch right past it and not even stop. All right, so now we're gonna use our roll and press. I'm gonna open this up and use my roll and press. Oh, that is so beautiful. You would never know that I did not actually press that. Instead, this little clover roll and press, such a nice tool to use. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew the rest of these off camera, and then when I come back, I'm gonna show you how I attach this long strip right here. All right, so we're back, I'm back, and I have uh, sewn all my squares in, so you can see from here. Now I'm ready to add the strip, and I leave my strips with the fabric. I did not cut this down as the pattern had me do, was is instructing us to do. I just left them with the fabric. They're supposed to be 40 and a half inches. I decided that with the fabric is close enough. You're gonna trim off your excess anyways. All right, so I'm gonna start. The strip is going right here. So I'll lay that down. You can see this is where I want it, right? So I'm gonna fold it back, 
right sides together and I can see my fabric is right on my placement line like it should be. We're going to take our cool pins and we are going to start pinning this down. Okay, I'm going to try to keep my pins out of my seam allowance because again I want to be able to stitch that all the way down. It's kind of tough to pin because you want to grab it from both sides. But I'm going to pin at every one of these seam allowances here. Every one of these junctures, I'm going to put a pin. I don't think you can really over pin a project. If you feel like you need less pins, you can do that. I want this to be straight. I don't want this strip is awfully narrow. And I think sometimes when you're sewing a narrow strip like this on a long length, it can tend to start waving or diving around on me. I don't want it to go anywhere. So I'm definitely, I'm gonna pin it down and show it who is the boss. I'm gonna be the boss of my fabric today. All right, here we go. Just about there. These pins are so nice for this project. These, they were made for this project. Beautiful. One more pin here. All right, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to slide this pin back a little. I'm just going to sew this in one shot. And I'm making sure my pins are set far enough back that I can do that. I can just sew and I do not have to worry about removing a pin as I go. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to sew all the way down. All right, here we go. Okay, so we've got this sewn. I'm going to get my pins out of here. I love this Clover magnetic pin cushion. Oh, it's amazing. It keeps my pins all in one place. I love that. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of finger press this back a little bit and I'm gonna start at one end again with my Clover roll and press and I'm just gonna start pressing this seam. And you are gonna be amazed at how nicely this seam lays down and I have not touched this with an iron. And roll it along here and I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit show it I mean it and I want it to stay there you see how it's just laying down it knows better to mess with me I think so she means business this little this seam presser is amazing what an amazing tool Clover always has amazing tools there we go. And you can see it just stays right where I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew all the rest of my strips on here, okay? When I come back, I will have already trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna use my red line that I have on the back and I'm gonna trim this all out and then I'm gonna show you how to make the straps and get the handles on here. All right, so I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back and I have gotten all my seams sewn on here. You can see how pretty this is. I've turned it over. We top stitched this. I top stitched this down, right? So that it holds all my loose pieces down. Turn it over and then that's when we cut just on the other side of the red line, okay? You can see how we've done that. All right. There we go. Now, now we need to put our handles on here. So let's make our straps. So I'm just going to set this piece aside. All right. And I'm going to grab my iron. Today I have my little Alisso iron on camera with me. I'm going to heat that up a little bit while I explain what we're doing. All right. So these are strips for my handle, all right? And I have two of them. 
Two of them make one handle because your handle is very long. It goes all the way down to the bottom and all the way up and around. So they're, they're fairly long. So I need to piece two pieces together, all right? I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna layer two pieces together, right sides up, okay? And I'm gonna use this clever little notion called a folded corner clipper by Creative Grids. This is gonna cut a perfect 45 degree angle and leave my seam allowance on there. Let me show you how this works. So I have my edges are even and it's straight over here. We're gonna put our corner clipper down and this is a four inch strap, it's four inches wide. So I'm gonna line up the bottom of my strap with the four inch mark on here and slide it over until this mark here lines up with this straight edge. Okay, and you can see exactly where to cut. I'll cut that. There we go. All right, now when I sew these two pieces together, I'm gonna fold them, I'm gonna put right sides together, just like this, flip it over, and I have fits together like a puzzle piece. I love that. I'm just gonna use one of my cool pins. All I wanna do is I wanna hold this bottom corner because I'm not, I can't see it. So I wanna make sure that this bottom corner doesn't fall down or slide while I'm sewing. So if I put a pin here, it's gonna stay right where I want it. So I'm gonna start sewing right here on this corner and sew down to this corner and then we'll press it open, okay? All right, so let's get this pressed open. And I'm doing that to reduce the bulk in this seam. And I would do this for binding as well. I would press my seam open. So we'll just get this done. I've got my wool pressing mat here. I just absolutely love using a wool pressing mat for all my pressing. I love that. Okay, so now we have our, perfect. All right, we have our seam. And I like how it is perfect. And you can see how my corners meet here. They're not offset, so I don't have a little dog ear here, a little weird gap in my thing, in my strip. It's nice and even, that line is even. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Clover Hot Ruler. I like this hot ruler because it will take the heat of an iron right on top of it. And I can measure, it has a ruler on this side, so I can measure exactly how deep I'm gonna put my seam. So I need a half inch seam here. So I'm gonna, see I place my ruler and I can just fold this over. I know it's exactly half an inch and I can put my iron right on that. It's not gonna melt this at all. Perfect. Crease that a little bit better. All right, let's do the other side. So again, my strip goes down, my hot ruler comes on, fold it over and press. And I'm pressing fairly hard with this. I want that crease to be in there. So when I take the hot ruler away, I can still see where my crease is. Okay, all right. Now I have this really wide strip. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half like this and I'm gonna press. Okay, so now we have our, our strap is folded in half. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna fold this one edge to the center and then I'm gonna fold the other edge to the center and I'm gonna press again, okay? Here we go.
Okay, marathon pressing is over. So we have done that. Now I'm gonna take my webbing and this comes in your kit. You have two pieces of this. I'm going to place my webbing inside of here, just like this. This piece comes over, this comes over, and then we're gonna fold it together, clip it and sew it. But I need to get this all laid in here first. So you can see how the webbing does not come to the very top of this. That's a good thing because we're going to need to stitch this to the back and I don't want the webbing there. The webbing should not be all the way up against the seam, right? So it's lower than that. All right, so we're going to just going to get this webbing in here. I'm just going to fold this along. Let's kind of move our iron here out of the way. Make sure the webbing goes all the way to the other end before I start clipping. Just double checking. Yep, that's perfect. That one comes down as well. I didn't. I wanted to make sure they were both going to stay out of my seam allowance here. All right, so this goes together. Fold this one together. Now fold this one on top, just like that. Now. We are going to use another amazing product from Clover. These are the mini Wonder Clips. I love these little guys. They are so cute, aren't they? So the mini Wonder Clips have a clear bottom on them and it's flat. On the top, it's got a rounded portion on it. You always want to clip this on your project with the flat side on the bottom because this is what's gonna glide on your sewing machine across your sewing machine bed, okay? This would not glide very well because it's, it's rounded and curved. This edge is made to move right across the bed of your sewing machine. All right, so I always put my clips like this, all right? So I'm just gonna quickly clip this strap and then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and stitch I'm going to stitch my folded edge. Let me clip that thread out of there. I always stitch my folded edge first because I want this folded edge to be perfect. I do not want it to be moving away from each other, right? I want this folded edge perfectly together. And you know, you can also hit this with a little more iron here. Hit this with a little bit of steam maybe. And it's going to help hold that folded edge right together and clip it. That works well. I like that. Let's do that again. Okay, we are to the end. Here we go. I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to sew all the way down. I'm going to come across the end. Let me trim that thread off of there. I'm going to come across the end and then I'm going to sew all the way back up. And then I'm going to sew this other end closed. I have little threads on the ends here. There we go. And I'm going to stitch across and then back tack it a little bit. And I'll meet you back over here. And we're going to attach it to our bag. Here we go. All right, so we're back. We have our strap made. I'm going to attach that to our project. Let's get our bag out here. I'm going to kind of move this stuff back and give us a little more real estate to work with here. I need our pins. All right, so one thing I'm going to do now quickly before we move to the next step is I am going to pull my pattern and I'm just going to double check that measurement and it is 15 inches. 
So now your straps are gonna go on like this, correct? But we need to sew them first this way. And you remember how we left that half an inch without webbing? You can see how easily this moves. That's because this step right here, okay? So let's get our long ruler out. There we go. I'm gonna measure 15 inches down. There we go. And that is where the strap attaches. Okay. Well, I'm going to take one of my cool pins and I'm just going to pin this on here like so. And I'm going to make sure I do not have a twist in my strap when I'm attaching them. If you do, that twist is going to be there for a while. Let's measure this 15 inches. Just set that ruler there. And I'm centering my handles on this strip right here, okay? So I want them to be nice and centered. All right. I'll stick a pin in there. There we go. All right, now I have made the other strap ahead of time. I have that one here. And I'm gonna turn this around like this and again, Measure 15 inches. Okay, we're gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance here. So a half inch in, I'm gonna stitch this and I'm gonna go forward, back, and forward because I wanna really tack these strips down, okay? So I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So we have our straps attached. We're going to trim that thread. Let's take our pins out. All right, now for the next part, we're going to complete our straps in two steps. So the first step, take that pin, we are going to lay them along here. We're going to come about three inches down and Place a pin, a mark. You could mark this with a friction pen. This is just a loose measurement. This is not set in stone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our straps on, then we're gonna sew to here. So we're gonna sew three inches down, all right? And then after we put the binding on, then we come back and we're gonna finish stitching this all the way to the top, just like this bag is. Okay, so we're gonna do our box X tack, but that is done after your binding is on. Otherwise, trying to put your binding on with those straps is just way too difficult, okay? So putting the length of your strap on now while the bag is flat, this is the way to do it, all right? So I'm just centering this, and I'm just roughly marking three inches. Like that. Let's put another couple pins in this. These cool pins are so nice for going through these large, thick fabric like this. I've got the webbing, a couple layers, several layers of fabric, and the batting, and these pins just go right through it. No problem, they're not bending at all. I love that. All right, so instead of starting to sew, at the bottom of the strap, I'm actually going to start to sew at the top of the strap. And I will explain why. Okay, so I'm going to start to sew right here. I'm going to sew all the way down, probably on this side. I'm going to start here, sew all the way down. 
across the bottom and all the way back up. And I don't need to back tack there because this seam is just temporary, right? So we're just getting these straps attached far enough up so that after we put the binding on, we can easily go back and back tack and pull this up and do your uh, box X tack right here, okay? So there's no need to reinforce and do all kinds of crazy stuff on here, okay? So I'm gonna go to the machine and do that. And when I come back, we will assemble our bag, yay. All right, so we're back. I'm back here and I have gotten all my straps sewn down. So I'm gonna take my pins out. Beautiful, I just, I love that. So, firmly attached, no twists in them in the handles, I love that. Now I'm gonna fold these right sides together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew our side seam and again, I'm going to utilize my cool pins here. I've got quite a bit of bulk here. I've got my batting. Oh, these pins are so nice. They're just, if you don't have these pins, treat yourself. Just get the pins. They are so amazing to use, especially if you make bags or purses, um, any kind of tote bags, any type of quilt as you go projects. I'm going to go ahead and pin the other side as well, as long as I'm here pinning. It'll save me a few steps back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to sew a half inch on either side. I am going to back tack at the beginning and at the end. I want to secure that seam. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. We have our side seams are done. Our bag's getting close, you guys. I promise, we're almost there. Let's box the corners. The June Taylor is very clever when they do their patterns. I love the way this is such a simple box corner. Look at this. There's no measuring and cutting your squares out and making sure you have the right size. Oh, I always stress about that when I have to box a quarter on a bag. June Taylor has already cut this out for you. Look how nicely this goes together. So I am simply centering my seam here. Look at this, perfect, just like that. So I'm going to pin this. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this at the bottom. Maybe another pin at the top. I, you know, Pins are good when you're making bags like this. Let's pin the other one together. So again, to reach, here's how I got there. I have my side seam is sewn. This is my corners already pre-cut for me. I take this and fold it like that. Shake it a little bit. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Let's open our seam up a little bit here. Nice, this is perfect. It fits just exactly like you want it to. Pin that seam allowance, and I'm pinning my pin diagonally, and that helps hold this flap down where I want it. Don't want it to flip over when I sew it. I want it to lay flat. I'm gonna put this one together like this. 
This just makes these bags so easy to make. All right, so we're gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna back tack this. And again, I'm sewing with a half inch seam allowance, not a quarter. Okay, here we go. Okay, you guys, this is real life quilting. As I was sewing this, I realized I moved my seam allowance. So I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna start over at the beginning where I, I know I started on a half an inch. Yep, that's where I started to veer off. Real life quilting here, guys. There's my half inch seam allowance. Keep your eyes on that seam allowance. I know where half inch is. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's take our pins out. We have a bag. I am thrilled. Let's trim a couple of threads here. Oh, look how nicely that box that bottom. That is beautiful. All right, so let's turn this right side up. I'm just going to poke my corners out a little bit here as I go. This bag is so beautiful. I love the teal. I love the pink. I can see making this bag in a lot of different colors. These are so useful. What a fun thing to have in my car. Okay, here we go. There's our bag, you guys. Yay, we made it. Now let's talk about binding. So I have already made my binding ahead of time. But what we did was we took two, two and a half by width of fabric strips. I used my corner clipper to put them together like we did our straps. Here's my seam. I pressed it open like binding should be. All right, now I'm gonna attach it to the bag. All right, so now the bag and I are gonna rustle a little bit here. All right, so I'm tucking this in under. So when I put binding on, I want to leave a good tail like this, all right? How big is that? Let me tell you how big that is. That's about 10 inches, all right, without the salvage. It's about 10 inches. I want to leave a nice tail, all right? And I'm just going to start sewing this. I don't want to start sewing right on my corner right here. I want to start like right here behind my strap, okay? So I'm just going to take this to my machine. I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch all the way around, all the way around this bag. And when I get to the other side, I'm gonna stop at this strap, okay? And I'm gonna have a good long length left over. And then I'm gonna show you a magic binding method on how I put my seams together so it's perfect sizing. It's so easy. I'll show you that in a minute. So I'll see you at the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch this on. Okay, here we are back. So I have started, and I did back tack my seams when I started and stopped. I did back tack that. Okay, you can see I've got long tails here. All right. So I move my iron over, kind of heat it up a little bit here. Tuck all this out of the way so I can press this. All right. Trying to get everybody situated where I want them. Okay, so I'm going to place my binding strip along my raw edge here. And then I'm going to flip it back. So I'm probably 
Well, I'm a good distance. I'm probably about four inches from my seam right here. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do the same thing about four inches or so. Only now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have a quarter inch gap between these two folds. All right. When I'm satisfied, I have my quarter inch gap. I like that. That's looking good. I'm going to take a hot iron and put this on here and I'm going to press it pretty hard. I want those creases set in there. Okay. All right. I like that. Okay. So I'm taking the back one and I'm going to open this one up. And I'm hoping the camera can pick this up. You can see my crease here and here. Okay. I'm going to lay this on the side here, just like this. So I've just opened this first strip. It's just opened up. The second strip, when I open this one up, you can see the crease is here. I'm now going to take this and move it at a perpendicular to my other piece. All right, so it's here. I'm just moving it here. Okay, there's no funky twisting going on. There's no odd thing happening. All right, now if I refold this binding, I can slide it up and down this strip until I can match this fold with the crease that I made in this binding, just like this. See that? Open this up a little bit. Okay. So now you can see the crease that I made in this binding perfectly lines up with this crease. And when I fold this together, you can see that all these creases are matching. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hold this bag to the side because I want this strip to lay here so you guys can see this. All right. I need a straight edge. And I don't care what it is. It can be a ruler. It can be whatever you have within reach. At this point, I have a hot ruler. Perfect. That's going to be my straight edge. And I'm going to lay this ruler so it is going the same direction. It's going the same direction direction as my project. I'm not going to do this and turn it this way. I want my angle this direction. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I have this on there. I'm going to turn this like this and I'm going to lay this from corner to corner and I'm intersecting this point right here. This time I am going to use a friction pen. All right. And I'm going to draw that line. This is my sewing line. Ha, perfect. All right. So you can see my line goes from this corner to this corner, goes through the center. All my creases are in alignment. Now I'm going to pin this and I'm going to go ahead and use my cool pins. These are fine. I'm going to pin once like this. That's holding these two pieces together. I want to definitely wrangle these two pieces together. So now I'm going to pin this like this. Okay. Perfect. So now this is not going anywhere. This is not going anywhere. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on that line. Okay. Let's go do that. Okay, so now I have this stitched. I'm going to take my pins out and I am going to show you how this perfectly fits on here. You guys see that? It's a perfect fit. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I'm going to use my corner clipper ruler and I'm just going to add my quarter inch to my seam allowance with this handy little quarter inch right here like this and rotary cut this off 
but I wanted to test that seam first before I cut it just to make sure it was right on even though I knew it was I wanted to show you that okay beautiful I'm going to press this seam open now there we go I'm going to fold it in half and go ahead and press that Wow, look at that. See how perfect that fit is on that binding? No matter what you're binding, it will fit perfect every time. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the machine and I'm just gonna sew here to here and then we're gonna flip our binding, we're gonna clip it and I'll show you how I top stitch it down. All right, so here we are, binding is on. I'm gonna just gonna give this a quick press all the way around and press that binding where I want it. And then we're gonna go top stitch this down. I top stitch my with the machine. Now you could hand stitch this. If that's what you like to do, that is fine. Hand stitching binding has, I'll be honest, has never been a favorite thing of mine to do. I, especially on bags like this, I will use a stitch in the ditch type stitch. I'm just gonna stitch right next to that seam. I'm gonna use my light blue thread on top that is, I've been sewing with the whole time. And then for the bobbin, I'm gonna change my bobbin to a dark teal so it'll match. So now I'm just gonna take my clips. Handy little wonder clips, I love these things. And I'm gonna clip it like this around the bag. All right, so we get our binding down and we'll be ready to go shopping. Another favorite thing I like to do, we'll go fill our bags up. So these insulated totes, I have found, if I start stacking um, very cold things in the bottom of it, you can close this with a button or the elastic bands like I was telling you about in the beginning. It will keep your things cold until I get home from the grocery store. And I live a ways from the grocery store. I do not live five minutes away. I live some distance. Oh, I've got an odd thread here. Hang on a second, I don't like that. Let's get that out of there. There we go. There we go. One or two more clips here. And I think we are ready to stitch our binding down by machine. I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, so our binding is on, and now we are going to do the very last step. We are going to attach our straps and do a box X tack here at the top to secure your straps so that they don't come off of here, okay? So I think I am gonna go ahead and stick one pin in here just to hold this strap right here at the very top because I don't want it to move. I want these straps to stay nice and even. So I'm pinning this strap through the binding, all right? Just like that. That way I know it's not gonna go anywhere. Let's do the other side here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna start sewing right here where we ended I'm gonna back tack that this time because I wanna secure those stitches. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna sew across, and I'm gonna count how many stitches it is to get across the strap. I believe it's eight, but I'm gonna double check that. I'm gonna sew across, and the reason I count the stitches is so that I can sew down the same number of stitches and over and make a square. 
all right? But I'm gonna stay under my binding and you can see where the binding, the edge of the binding is. I'm not gonna come onto the binding. I want it just right below that, okay? So let's go to the machine and finish our bag. So I'm going to stop right underneath that binding. I'm going to turn the bag, take my pin out because I don't need him there any longer. I'm going to sew straight across and I'm going to count my stitches. I believe it's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches exactly. All right, that's important because now I know how far down I need to to sew, I'm gonna sew eight stitches down and then go across so then I have a nice box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I think my hand doesn't go here, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna sew across the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna sew to this upper corner. I'm turn my bag around again go to this upper corner all right now I'm going to sew back across the top of this back across the top okay now I'm going to sew to the bottom corner turn the back one more time there we go to the bottom corner Perfect, and now down to where our stitches ended. And back tack. Beautiful. Okay, let's trim a couple of threads and I believe our bag is complete. Ah, what a fun bag this has been to make. Now, in your kit, you also receive a piece of template plastic. And this is perfect for placing in the bottom like this. Just kind of hold it open for you so when you're loading groceries in, super easy to do that. It also comes with three elastic bands. And if you like, you can fold this in like this and we can take an elastic band stitch it to this side and pull it around and put it over a button that way you can hold your bag closed and then there's another one for the center so there's three elastic bands with your kit I don't do that I normally just start with my coldest food on the bottom my frozen stuff then my refrigerated stuff and I usually put like a loaf of bread or something like that on the very top and that just kind of helps insulate it and creates like a little mini cooler which is perfect sits straight up in the back of my car and I don't have to worry about it tipping over so I hope you've enjoyed this video I know this was a longer video so thank you for hanging in there with me I appreciate it if you enjoy this video, please give me a like, and we look forward to seeing you on additional Shabby Fabrics videos.